Hello everyone, TechFairy here, with the first in a series of video tutorials on common actions in Audacity. Audacity is a free audio editing program available for Microsoft Windows, Mac OS X, and several varieties of Linux. These tutorials have been filmed on a Mac, but the techniques are very similar on PC and Linux. To download Audacity for your own computer, please visit audacity.sourceforge.net or web.audacityteam.org. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to import an audio file into Audacity, create a short audio clip, and export the clip. The first step is to find an audio file you want to modify. Audacity can import many common audio file formats, such as WAV, AIFF, and MP3 right out of the box. If you want to import a larger range of file formats, you can install the FFmpeg library by selecting Audacity, Preferences, Libraries, and downloading the FFmpeg Import Export Library. Here, you'll also find the MP3 Lame Encoder Export Library, which allows you to export MP3 files. To import your chosen file, select File, Import, Audio, and find the file you wish to import. You can also import files by dragging and dropping them into the Audacity project window. Once the file has been imported, it will appear in the project window as a waveform. In this case, the imported file is in stereo, so there are two waveforms, one for each channel. Above the waveforms is the timeline, which shows the length of the audio waveform and where it will start playing when you select Play. At the top left of the window is the Transport toolbar. In order, the buttons are Pause, Play, Stop, Skip to Start, Skip to End, and Record. We'll talk about the Record button in the next video. Select where you want to begin playback by clicking on the waveform. The vertical cursor will move to the spot you have selected. Begin playback by selecting play or pressing the spacebar. The audio will play until it reaches the end of the track or you interrupt it. Press the pause button or the P key to pause playback. When you begin playback again, it will continue from the same spot. Press stop or the spacebar again to return to the cursor to the original position. Note that if you press space while playback is paused, it will stop playback rather than resuming it. Press skip to start or the home key to return the cursor to the beginning of the track, and skip to end or the end key to place the cursor at the end of the track. These buttons are only enabled while playback is stopped, so you can't use them as rewind or fast forward buttons. While the audio is playing, Use the left and right arrow keys to step back and forward one second, respectively. Hold shift to instead step 15 seconds at a time. While playback is stopped, the arrow keys instead move the cursor, while holding shift creates a selection. Now, let's create a 10 second clip from our waveform. Select approximately where you want to begin the clip and press the zoom in button for a closer look. Now you can select the start location with more accuracy. Hold the shift key and click about 10 seconds after the start. You can press play or the space key to play the selection. To adjust your selection, move your mouse over the start or end. Your mouse cursor will change to a pointing finger. Click and drag to move the start and end locations of your clip. Once you are satisfied with your selection and have stopped playback, select edit, remove special, trim audio. This will remove everything except your selection. If you make a mistake, you can always undo any action you take by selecting Edit, Undo, or pressing Command Z on the keyboard. Let's make our new clip fade out at the last second. Select Skip to End and zoom in so you have a good view of the last second or so. Select about a second before the end, then select Edit, Select, Cursor to Track End, then Effect, Fade Out. Notice that the waveform now diminishes to nothing in the last second of the clip. When adding effects, you must always select Range first. It's always a good idea to save your projects frequently in case something goes wrong. Select File, Save Project, and choose a location to save the project. Notice that this is saving as a, a .aup file, not an audio file. If you go to the saved pro location, you'll notice that Audacity has also created a folder called project name underscore data. Audacity saves project data as small chunks that it combines with information in the AUP file. 
you can't open the AUP file in most audio video players, so let's export our clip as well. To export, select File, Export Audio. You can choose where to save the new audio file and, more importantly, what file format you want. Audio formatting and compression is a complicated topic that we don't really have time to discuss right now, so generally speaking, you should export a WAV or WAV file if you want uncompressed data, or an MP3 file if you want compression. To export as MP3, you'll need the LAME encoder mentioned earlier. Many audio files have metadata, which stores things like the song title, artist, and album. It's generally a good idea to preserve this metadata unless you have a specific reason not to. Don't forget to follow copyright law if the music you're working with was composed by somebody else. Now you've learned how to import, modify, and export an audio file. In the next tutorial, I'll go over recording your own audio. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This work, Audacity Tutorial 1, Editing an Existing Audio File, is a derivative of Tutorial, Editing an Existing Audio File from the Audacity Manual, used under Creative Commons Attribution 3.0. Reformat by Kevin McLeod is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 3.0.